Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and pardon all the noise, but today we're going to talk about choosing a good China type symbol. So all these symbols, uh, these four, not counting the hi-hats, are from different manufacturers. This one on my left, your right, is an atlas, a very old Italian symbol. This one on my right, on my main stand, is a Masterwork Phallus series. 24 inch monster with rivets that I put in there. Here we have an old Wuhan 20, pretty much one of the first China symbols I ever bought. And down here, we have a Peisty 22 inch traditional uh, swish, they call it. Now, these could be called Pang symbols, uh, China symbols, obviously Chinese symbols, uh, swish knockers, which is a Zildjian uh, kind of brand of a symbol usually about 20, 22 inches with lots of rivets, sometimes as many as 22 rivets. And uh, this Peisty most resembles that symbol. That was the first China symbol I bought when I was a kid, uh, a swish knocker uh, by Zildjian, and it was an A Zildjian. And uh, I liked it for a while, but then I went and saw Mel Lewis at the Village Vanguard, and I changed my mind. <laughs> because that symbol wasn't nearly as dirty as what Mel was using. Uh, what Mel was using sounded more like this. And what he had there was a, a, a large Wuhan similar to this. Of course, this one's upside down. You can use them all upside down like that, sort of a fusion style thing that came into play back in the 70s. And uh, his symbol was so great, I said, I got to have that sound. And then my search went on for a really good China type symbol. And the next one I got was this, like I said, this Wuhan here, uh, but it was a little small. And we'll turn this around in a minute. Uh, so my search went on after that, and I searched and searched and searched for many, many years to find something that I liked. Finally, in the, uh, I would say, late 1990s, uh, maybe early 2000s, I can't remember exactly, but I found some, started finding some Peisty symbols that I really liked. And what grew out of that was an affiliation with Peisty that I really no longer have, but uh, those days they would send me a lot of things. And one day I got a big package in the mail, uh, and that was a whole bunch of uh, traditionals. They had just come out, and they were sending them out to their artists uh, to get their opinions and all that. And I didn't know what to think. I was, of course, a fan of the 602s. Those had been my favorite, especially the flat rides for years. But I didn't care much for the, uh, the China-type symbols. But uh, when I opened this package, there was like 20 symbols in there. And two of them were these... Uh, these China type symbols. And I was like, whoa. And I put one up there and immediately I just about jumped out of my skin because that was the sound. So I was thrilled. It's, it's not as dark as this. But I used this symbol for years uh, on my right as sort of a big band kind of swish knocker. Uh, with, and I put rivets in it. None of them came with rivets. And I love it. I still love it. It's very mellow and quiet, not overbearing, and a little bit darker than that original Zildjian, but not quite as nasty as this Wuhan. And then uh, several more years went by, and then I found this masterwork symbol. That's a 24 that I really like, and this is what I'm sort of using now uh, for my jazz big band stuff. So.
It's a great combination of nastiness, but we do have some stick articulation, and it's loud as hell. <laughs> so uh, this one is not very loud. So this one cuts through everything pretty much. So I've been using this now. So that's sort of my journey into the Mel Lewis China symbol thing. It's real hard to find a good one, especially in old Wuhan, that you can write on. So today I'm going to show you some of these China symbols I have. I have lots and lots of these but I'll show you some of my favorites. I'll also show you some weird ones. Now this one on my left is an Atlas. That was a, I believe it was an Italian brand back in the day. It's just labeled 20 inch Chinese and it's very, very different. Of course, this was one of the symbols on my journey. I ended up using this one for a while as well. And I do really, really like it, uh, but it's not the same as this. Or this. So I still do use it. A lot of times I'll use it upside down. Uh, and it sounds really good with mallets. So. Okay. Uh, all these sound good with mouse, really. They're great roll symbols. I end up using a lot of these in the orchestra. A lot of times I'll ask for a Chinese symbol in a lot of the parts. Uh, we talked about this masterwork already. It's 24. I put, um, I believe, eight rivets in it. That's normally what I do. And this symbol right here is a Wuhan. And this is kind of like my fusion symbol. Uh, it's got a great white noise sound. So it's super loud and obnoxious, but effective if you want that really crashing, noisy sound there. All right, so we'll put up a few different symbols. We'll lose this atlas. I am going to use these um, symbol nuts here because I don't want anything flying off and destroying my face today. So I'll show you a few more of the Pisces. Now, I had someone comment recently that they never made Pisces uh, Chinas. You're wrong, they did. And you see it here. Okay, uh, they discontinued them pretty quick, but they did make some. This is uh, an 18 inch Paiste traditional. I know how rare this is. Uh, China symbol, a real one with the real upturned bell here. The square bell, I call it. And it's a pretty cool symbol. Not like a Wuhan, though. So that's probably why they discontinued it. Probably wasn't uh, very effective compared to this. Not the greatest symbol. I do not hardly use this at all. Uh, but I just wanted to show it to you because, like I said, you'd be surprised at what they made that you don't know about. Uh, lots of prototypes, lots of things out there. Uh, but this was not a prototype. This was a production model, and you see it here, okay? So this was called the Medium Light China 18 Paiste Traditional. Now we have another here. This is a 20-inch China, and um, they call this a Swiss China, just like this 22 down here. I like this symbol a lot. I did not put rivets in it. I wanted one that did not have rivets, so we'll play you this a little bit.
Again, not my favorite symbol of these, but I do use it sometimes. Uh, the other ones, like this one's way better. Okay, so, uh, but I did want to show you what a small Paiste traditional sounds like. If you're going to buy one of these swish uh, cymbals, if you could find one, get a 22. I don't believe they made 24s, but they did make several, uh, I've seen them before, the 22s. That's a great cymbal. This one's good, but not great, okay? All right, we also have some smaller Wuhan. So let me show you some of these. I have a whole collection of these. Uh, this is a really tiny one. I believe this is a 12, it is. We'll leave this off for now. And these are all pretty much the same. They're very inexpensive. It's just pretty much white noise. You get the idea. A lot of times, different composers and Broadway shows, orchestrators, will ask for a particular size. That's one of the reasons I have these small ones. They're always asking for, you know, 12-inch china, 14-inch, and all that. All right, here's a little bigger one. And you'll notice these have different stamps. They're all made by Wuhan. They're just distributed sometimes by LP, different companies like that. Uh, I believe this is a pretty much a 15, yeah. This one's super nasty. So again, the same kind of white noise sound. Now, you can all put all of these upside down like this. So this is why I use those felts, okay? Because you'll see if you don't, it'll get away from you. It can hop off the sound. On this one, I have the felts. And then it's stationary. You'll need a small wing nut to fit in this hole here. They don't all work, so you can always replace what you got. And then we have an even bigger one, and I believe this is a 16. Yep. And this is a newer one. So you get, you get the idea, pretty much all these are the same kind of thing. Uh, now what I, I do want to show you is one thing here. Let me take this off. And I want to show you the difference um, of these symbols as far as age goes. So I have found over the years that they have changed a little bit. So this is a really, really old one. This one has to be at least 40 years old because I know I bought it from my buddy Barry in New York in the 80s. And you see how it's stamped completely different here than the um, new ones. This is when they did not have a distributor like LP or any of these other companies. This is before that. And I believe these, I feel like these were a little bit just nastier, you know, and thinner.
Now, granted, all these Wuhans are going to sound a little bit different. Um, it's just the nature of a handmade symbol. But if you could find yourself a really old one, I think they're better. I really do. Uh, this one is just an amazing symbol. And this one's great. But it does not have that pure noise sound. It has more of a tone. So the moral of the story is thinner, like lots of symbols, especially crashes, is better. As thin as you can get it. All right, so you look for a big symbol but a lightweight. That's why that masterwork sounds so great, because it's unbelievably light. It's a 24-inch symbol, but uh, you see the grams here on the screen. I'll have to weigh it, but I know it's not heavy at all. All right, so uh, all these other ones, too. This one's an older one, a much older one. You can see the difference in the finish. All right, the original ones were very, very dull-looking. That's how you can tell when you're looking online. So I like these old ones. These are the two really old ones that I have. Okay, let's move on here. We'll take these off now. So I did want to show you uh, one more. Something bad's going to happen here. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is a broken one that I found at a garage sale. This was a, a, a Symbol of Doom version, the Oriental China Crash. Be really careful, you'll cut the hell out of your hand with this. But I haven't finished cutting it out. Usually I put some tape here. This is a great sounding symbol. And I, I basically got it for about $5, so. Now my point here being, if a if China symbol's cracked, of course you don't want to crack it, so again, glancing blows like I've been telling you during the series. But it doesn't make that much of a difference in the sound uh, compared to when you're do playing with other cymbals that might be cracked, you know, especially ride cymbals. They sound terrible. A China cymbal that's, that's cracked can actually still sound really good. Uh, so if you find one really cheap that's cracked, don't worry about it so much. You can put a little tape on it to keep yourself safe, or you could just cut it out, or just take a grinder or a file and, and smooth it out, but it'll still sound pretty good. All right, still sounds Chinese, like a Chinese symbol. Of course, I don't hardly ever use this thing, but I did want to show you that. I couldn't resist, you know, $5 broken symbol. And I'll buy anything that says symbol on it. <laughs> All right, so then finally we have this Jack D. Jeanette, <laughs> really strange Chinese symbol. Not sure why I bought this. Uh, I like all the others. This symbol is horrible uh, and it's weird looking, but some people actually really like it, so I'm, I apologize to you, but I really don't use it at all. But I do have the rest of the symbols in this series, and I really like them. It's just really dry, and it has a tone to it. So, like all the symbols in this series, it's extremely dry. All right, it's um, not good. <laughs> I have never really used it. I bought it and I paid pretty good money for it because I wanted to complete this, the set of these that I have. Uh, I love the rides, I like the crash, the hi-hats are pretty cool. 
not this. So you might want to avoid this symbol. And it was discontinued very shortly after. And these symbols have kind of a little bit of a bend in them. Don't worry about that. But but I don't, I don't really recommend these at all. They don't have much of a sound, OK? So the chinas I recommend for writing are the masterwork symbols, like these. These are great. And uh, then the Wuhans are tremendous. You don't want to buy this, these cracked ones unless they're $5. But uh, these could be amazing, these Wuhans. And then the Peisty traditional 22-inch swish is a really, really great symbol. Now remember, when you mount these up, upside down, we'll just go over this one more time, it's going to tilt like that. So just get your washer and your symbol felt and make sure that the nut fits and then really clamp it down, okay? And then we're back to the original setup except for this symbol that I had. So I hope you enjoyed this. You got something out of this. This will be the last in this series, I've done splashes, rides, hi-hats, um, crashes, and now these. So that should be five. And we'll move on to something else shortly. Thanks, and we'll see you soon.